Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Wiz Magic, Season 4, Episode 25 and 26, Twilight's Kingdom. It's nice that we get to see more of what Twilight has been doing as a princess. Also, a little bit too much ego there, Spike. Just a tad. Though it's nice to know that what Twilight's actually been doing as a princess kind of matches up with what we've seen. Which is basically nothing. Mm-hmm. Because I didn't quite know what to do with her apparently until recently. Well, after these two episodes. Yeah, but then why make her a princess if you don't have a purpose for her? You don't give someone power and position when there's really nothing for them to do. I think it was just time for her to become a princess and learn the final lesson to become a princess princess. <laughs> so we rush through season three to hurry up and make her a princess, and then we cool our heels a whole season to actually make her a princess. Thank you, Hasbro. Well, we now know where those two ponies from Equestria Games are from, the ones we saw in the VIPs box. Mm -hmm. And we can also tell that Spike's next lesson he should learn is tactfulness. Again, he definitely needs to learn that lesson. <laughs> Most definitely. He also needs to learn a little humility. Because <laughs> we went from, oh, yeah, I burnt up that big ice cloud and it's no big deal, to, hey, I saved the whole kingdom. <laughs> Twice! Not really. Yeah, no, it, no, you didn't. No, that was just an ice cloud. It wouldn't have really done much damage. Maybe hurt some ponies, but with the way that Equestria works, that wouldn't have really mattered. Sorry. <laughs> I would love to know what was going on in that meeting because it seemed like it was kind of important, but it was never explained in this episode, so I'm guessing that's being left for season five. Either that, or it actually manages to relate back to Tirok's escape. Then wouldn't we have found out more information about the, what they were talking about? You would think so, but we are talking about a children's show. I'm still thinking that the meetings were a season five thing. A lot of the stuff that we saw in Season 4 that we're going, wait, you never did anything with this. Hopefully we'll get addressed in Season 5. Mm-hmm. Ah, and moving on to that song, I liked it. It was really good. And I think this is the first time Luna has ever sung in a song before. And I also like that little bit of symbolism right after the lyrics and the imagery of the sun rising and so does the moon, where all three of the cutie marks dissolve into sparkles in front of a twilight sky. Mm -hmm. Nice symbolism there. <laughs> actually took my brain a couple of seconds after I saw that. Oh, I see what you did. Yeah, uh, the song was nice, but all of the circling and then flying above her, I'm like, mm, that feels a little condescending. You guys are, have the high ground, literally right now. <laughs> I love the little things you read into things where I'm like, where did she get that from? And, oh look, a deep ominous alley. Nothing's going to happen. And then we get the return of a villain from Generation 1. Specifically from the series pilot of Gen 1, when they had Tony Randall and Sandy Duncan for voice actors. Mm -hmm. And that whole animation where they explain the origins of where Tyrick came from for the plot is kind of a point back to Season 1 and the opening of, season of the two-parter for the beginning of Season 1. With the whole storybook animation. Mm -hmm. And we also get another point back to season two with the whole mentioning of Sybaris escaping and not guarding anymore. And we find out how much more ominous that episode actually is. Whoa, that got deep there, man. One little mention <laughs> off to the side and then suddenly, what, what, wait, wait. Twilight actually had a reason to worry in that episode? Mind equals blown. Yeah, well, Chirok was pretty scary in the Gen 1 premiere, and this Chirok is much scarier because his victims are much more than we need to capture four ponies so I can transform them so they can draw my chariot of darkness and create an eternal night. No, we have, I'm going to take all of the magic from all the ponies ever and rule over the world. I kept hoping Scorpion would show up, though. Maybe that's another season five thing. <laughs> or at least a visit to the land he came from, since the story animation said that Scorpan did return to the land of his birth. 
And you know, if you think about it, the only way to get rid of Discord for plot reasons is to turn him evil. One of the ways you could get rid of him is to turn him evil. You know, because he's kind of this giant, omni-powerful trump card. <laughs> yeah, but so are Celestia and Luna. There's more ways to do it than switching sides. We had one earlier this season when he actually got sick. Yeah, but I'm saying for a big episode like this, they actually do a pretty good job of getting rid of all of the big powers that could potentially take things over for Twilight before she gets the chance to actually show her medal. They do a pretty good job of getting rid of Celestia, Luna, and Cadence with the fact of like, oh yes, they're giving up their powers. That is a brilliant plan, by the way. <laughs> did I put enough sarcasm on that? D did I? <laughs> At least they weren't just completely getting rid of them. They were putting them somewhere else that could still be useful, like Twilight Sparkle. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so Turok probably doesn't know you exist, Twilight, so we're going to give you all our magic, and then we're going to wait here to be captured. Why not run? Make Turok come find you. It would have bought Twilight more time. The only real missed opportunity I see in this episode is the fact they could have done more with the whole, I would call it a subplot with Discord, because he seems to be able to see what's going on. He points out a bunch of stuff. He says he's noticed stuff, and I don't think he really needs to eavesdrop to find out what's going on. Well, when you have as much magic as Discord, eavesdrop could be a term for just outright spying. Yeah. And since he seemed to know everything, he seemed to be, like, understanding where the plot was going before anyone else, and he was kind of hinting at where things should go. So when he turned, I thought he was just playing the sides, so he could have as much fun as possible, and then we find out he actually turned. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. The only real big disappointment to me in this entire episode. No, there's so, so much potential there, because Discord playing the two sides... You know, and not totally trusting Tirok. When do you ever trust evil? Even evil doesn't trust evil. So until the actual moment of betrayal, I thought Discord was just playing along. Because he definitely looked guilty enough that, yeah, I know I need to play along, but ah, this still hurts. Oh god, that's Twilight's older brother giving me the, how could you? And then when Fluttershy does it, ah, that hurts. Yeah, there's a bunch of moments where you can clearly see in his face that he's questioning what he's doing. He's slightly conflicted on the inside about, like, oh, do I do this? Do I do that? Should I have done this? Was that a bad idea? And yes, it was a bad idea. <laughs> because you actually trusted Chirok. You weren't playing the game. You trusted the dangerous evil person. Oh, and a quick mention of Discord talking about his dreams. I don't think anyone would want to go into Discord's dreams. It would be like going into Pinkie Pie's dreams. Not even Luna wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and talking about Discord again, I like how he's the one who pointed out, like, oh, maybe you should look at these particular bookmarked passages. Hint, 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 hint. It might be having to do with this. Hint, 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 hint. And then they go off to the library, and I see Twilight and everyone else looking through all the other books. And I'm looking at the TV, talking to the TV, going, Twilight, the diary. Use it. Read it. It's right there. Look at the diary. It's, look, the diary. No, the diary. <laughs> the journal. Whatever you call it. The book with the things written in it. You know, the bookmark, the thing Discord handed you. Yeah, that might be important. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have anyone realizing in story, you know, just how helpful what Discord points out is. Like when he baited Twilight to go back and help her friends. You know, at that point, they were more focused on the fact of, Oh my god, he read our diary! Uh, now that I think about it, I think it would have been real interesting to have a full-blown battle of wits between Discord and Tarek. Because they both seem like very intelligent villains. Yeah, there was so much more potential there for a dynamic, both during the period where they were cooperating and at the time of betrayal. I mean, Discord doesn't even get a chance to get a blow in. I do like how Tyrk played on the nature of Discord to get him to cooperate with him by saying that, Oh, that's not true freedom. This is true freedom. You want this, don't you? This is better than friendship. And Discord, who misses making as much mischief as he used to, was like, Oh, yeah, that sounds fun. And then as they go along, This is not as much fun as you told me it would be. Because your interests have changed a little bit, Discord. 
you used to love the stuff when you didn't have anything to care about, and now that you care about something, it's kind of different creating mischief now, isn't it? And to me, I found it kind of interesting which flashbacks they actually decided to show actual images for. I like picked like the most recent ones to actually show little animation clips from when they were doing the flashbacks. It's like, why wouldn't you have wanted to show the older ones? Because those are the ones that are least likely to be in anyone's current memory when they actually go and go in to watch this episode. <laughs> Not the most recent ones you just played a couple of weeks ago. Oh, but for the sake of the audience, it's which remember the target demographic is still young females, and I am not degrading my own sex, but reasoning powers at a younger age and memory at a younger age are not necessarily at the same level as someone who's older. Pulling up something that's only a couple weeks old that they probably just rewatched not that long ago is going to trigger more of a memory for them than going all the way back to Rarity getting the thread. I am glad that they didn't show all of the flashbacks and they just gave you basic summaries of what was going on so he didn't spend a lot of time adding filler stuff into an episode which was probably already packed with story. Mm -hmm. And moving on to the keys that we get shown right now, I really like the key designs that they've shown us so far in the episode. I think my favorite right now is Rainbow Dashes. It's been about the angles on it and how they have the lightning bolt part of it become the main shaft of the key really appeals to me. Well, that's one of the keys where the cutie mark is worked in more to the entire key. A lot of the others, the cutie mark design is only worked into the part where you grip it, not the actual part that goes into the lock. And then we get the big reveal of Twilight. We need to get rid of all of our magic. No pressure. No pressure, Twilight. <laughs> Oh, yes, I'm willing to give up all my magic. What do you mean you're giving me all of yours? <laughs> <laughs> and for the heck of it, my brain was attempting to figure out the logistics of a spell like that. So if you're giving up all your magic, does the spell... How does the spell continue to work after all the magic has left your body? Is it, like, in the spell itself that it can continue on without your magic? And hopefully complete the task you set it on to? Because if not, you're kind of effed because you can't control it anymore. <laughs> I would think more that you're casting at the beginning and then everything that happens after is the force of your spell so you expend the magic to create the spell and so that magic is used to coalesce all the other magic and transport it hmm. and i really like the details they put into this episode like when twilight goes to raise the sun and lower the moon you actually see her mane start to take on the more of a ethereal appearance like celestia or luna's mane mm -hmm. And when ponies get their magic pulled out of them, their eyes go gray and their cutie marks disappear. I guess it gives more credence that cutie marks are more of a mirror of your talent, a representation of the talent you have, not a predictor of what your talent's going to be. Because some people seem to see them as destiny marks. <laughs> well, we had that whole song, What My Cutie Mark Is Telling Me, at the end of season three. But considering you don't get your cutie mark until you figure out what your special skill is, or what means the most to you, and now we move on to the scene where we've where Tyrick finds out, wait a minute, you don't have any powers anymore? And then we move on to the part of, wait a minute, there's a fourth princess? Why didn't you tell me this, Discord? I didn't think it was important at the time. You didn't ask. Okay. <laughs> Which would have been a nicer way to put it than, oh, well, I was holding out until I was really, really, truly sure that you weren't going to betray me, Tyrock. But now that you gave me this necklace, I know you're not going to betray me. So here's what you need to do in order to capture the fourth princess. And speaking of that necklace, I knew it was going to be important, but I hoped it was going to be important in a slightly different way on top of what it was already going to be. Because I had a feeling it was going to be the key, you know, Twilight's key. But I thought it might also be some type of restraining amulet, like it restrains the powers, so we could get a more plausible explanation of why Discord didn't use his powers to just, oh, I don't know, snap Mr. Big and Powerful to a different plane of existence. Well, it still could have been, because Tirok doesn't take it off until he's already very powerful. At that point, he had absorbed magic from the three basic pony types and exiled the three royals that he knew of to Tartarus, so he might have actually built up enough power that if it was a restraining device, he was able to overpower it. But if that's the case, then considering how powerful I consider Discord to be, it shouldn't have had any restraining effect on Discord, which makes the whole point null and void. Mm -hmm. But it would have been interesting if it was, considering that it was a gift 
from his brother Scorpan. It's a nice touch making Scorpan Chirok's brother instead of a transformed prince. Well, I don't remember much from the source material they're pulling from, so thank you for recently watching it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really need to do that to get the reference points I needed. I was like, oh, I probably should do that, and then I'm like, I remember this way too well. <laughs> And I like the effect that they used to show what Discord's magic would look like. It's very chaotic and almost like you're looking into the depths of the universe. But we've skipped over some of the best Discord moments. Like when Discord showed up a la Mary Poppins. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> Give me your best Discord moments. <laughs> <laughs> and when uh, Discord was originally confronting Tirok. You know, the very beginning where Cherok was actually trying to attack Discord and how Discord had the visuals of him being a goody two-shoes. That had to be conjured out of Discord's own magic. So why would Discord choose to have those symbols shown and then shoo them off like, Oh yes, I'm good. Oh wait, no, I'm not really. <laughs> For a laugh. Yes, because he's Discord, but it falls much better with the I'm pretending to be evil that we hoped it was going. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget Discord's classic general stand speaking to his troops. That's been ripped off so many times. Mm -hmm. And speaking of bits like that, the whole, why don't they turn me into an alicorn princess? <laughs> because that would be disturbing. <laughs> and I think you have to at least be a pony to start. <laughs> also, as far as I know, you're male. Plus, I also think it was DHX kind of going, Hey, Hasbro, hey! <laughs> Gonna do it to us again? Gonna? Gonna try? <laughs> like, no, we are not turning the main six into all and alicorns. No! We'll do this rainbow power thing, that's it. <laughs> bad, Hasbro, bad! <laughs> and now on to the beginning of the final battle. Oh my god, Twilight didn't get serious until... BOOM! You blew up my books! You die! You take my friend's magic away, you... No oh wait, she doesn't know that yet. But still, it's like... You threaten me? You threaten my kingdom? Meh. You destroy my books? You die! <laughs> I bet you were, like, screaming at the TV going, THE BOOKS! <laughs> or your computer screen, since you watched it on there. Yeah, I was, and I'm like, well, at least she saved Aloysius, and I know Spike wasn't there, but her home, the Ponyville Library, all those books. <laughs> all the, those. I could just see every paper master from Read or Die going, the books! <laughs> and going for an all out assault. <laughs> uh. And we just had that thing in the Trajan episode where she was like, Oh, these books are important to me now because they remind me of you guys. Uh huh, my memories. <laughs> and now it gets serious. And I go, did, did this episode just become an episode of Dragon Ball Z? Oh wait, there's not enough screaming. <laughs> also, the attacks aren't taking long enough to power up. <laughs> and besides, we had transformation sequences. This is clearly Magical Girl. <laughs> And it's acting more like a real battle where you don't sit there waiting for your opponent to charge up their attack. Like you were saying, it's like, um, I'm going to just shoot you and, you know, we'll get on with this because the audience was waiting. <laughs> yeah, and then Tyrek realizes, hmm, we seem to be at an impasse. I know how to get to you. The classic question for the hero. Save your friends by giving up your powers or try to defeat me because we know you can't. <laughs> Yes, and even though Twilight's element is magic and friendship is magic, it's still like, Twilight, you realize what's going to happen to the entire world if you give him four alicorns worth of magic? <laughs> I mean, I know this is the choice you have to make because the story demands it, but unless this gets you your key, you have just screwed the entire planet. Well, she did make the good choice in the end because... By saving Discord, she really gave Discord a good sense of, Oh, I was a real idiot, wasn't I? God, I was an idiot. I'm an idiot. Here, take this. Oh, look, it's a key. It's not a key, it's an amulet. It will be a key, though. Good point. <laughs> Let's go get the key. 
And my actual favorite key is Twilight's design. I really like it. And as you were saying, I got shivers when they were all getting powered up. I was like, ooh, wait a minute. I was kind of thinking this before, but yes. My Little Pony Friendship's Magic is definitely a magical girl show. <laughs> the transformations, the explosions, the bad guys, learning about friendship and your friends. Yep, that sounds like a magical girl plot, doesn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. But I have to backtrack a little bit. Twilight post getting all of that extra magic and trying to control it. I know you talked about the sun and the moon, but just trying to walk calmly like nothing's wrong and trying to fly not at the speed of light. <laughs> you know you're going really fast when even Robo Dash goes, whoa, what was that? <laughs> yeah, very much so. And so at that point, the power's not really under control, but we have anguish makes you focused. You wreck the books. Okay, I now have the mental concentration to control all this magic and use all of it against you because you wrecked my books. <laughs> I don't care about saving my friends or saving the world. I'm just caring about getting revenge for those poor, helpless books. Okay, so sorry to backtrack. Now on to the rainbow transformation sequence. Yes, that was very well done. I... I'm okay with most of the designs. I'm most okay with Twilight's because it doesn't really do much. It just lengthens her mane a little bit. But everyone else, it seems like they just went, you know what would be cool? Lots of stripes. More mane. Let's give them more mane. How about more mane? You think more mane's enough? Nah, we need more mane. You think this is enough? No, give them the more. Do we need anything else? Nah, just more mane. Make their hooves sparkly. Maybe that will work. <laughs> yeah. It felt a little bit like Power Ponies because, like, wow, you guys look over the top. <laughs> but yeah, Twilight and Rainbow Dash would be my favorites in the transformation, or my least disliked, depending on how you want to look at it. Mm -hmm. Then of course, we will blast you away with rainbows, because rainbows represent friendship. I do like the fact that they pretty much just suck out all of his power and give it back to everyone at the end. Yeah, well that's the thing. Pretty much all the magic he had wasn't his, and we got the setup when the magic was transferred from the other three princesses to Twilight, it, it has to go somewhere. So let's just give it all back. Because we need it to make Equestria run. <laughs> and now we get the reveal of, holy shit, that's a nice place set. I mean, Twilight's castle. <laughs> yeah, but now that it's so obviously a castle, what's Ponyville going to do for a library? <laughs> Think about the poor fillies and colts. They need those books, you know, access to improve their minds. They don't have TV and internet. <laughs> uh, though I think maybe the, the bottom of the castle is a library. Who knows? We don't really know much about the inside of this castle yet. We just know we now have the Council of the Main Six. Or Twilight's Round Table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we get... Why don't I have a throne? <laughs> Another excellent Discord moment. And then Fluttershy going, Hmm? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I kind of turned evil there for a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and also I get it, I'm not an element of harmony. And also I'm not as marketable to the little girls. So we have to have Princess Twilight and her council. That's an interesting playset. Alright, what are we working on today? We're working on a treaty with the ponies from Saddle Arabia. <laughs> and if you're going over an actual theoretical meeting, I suddenly saw Rainbow Dash going, Oh, another one! This is so boring! <laughs> I was thinking more of how the playset would be presented. Because it's a castle for doing work in. But it's all going to be Pretty Pretty Princess and her best friends. Uh, I hope at least it's a decent size. <laughs> Oh, and every time I watch that scene at the end where they're all getting set up and they're all walking through the throne room for the first time and they, they're playing that nice music in the background, I go, I'm, I'm getting kind of the feels here. <laughs> <laughs> Friendship is awesome. <laughs> it can create giant, powerful laser beam rainbows. That's so wicked. <laughs> oh, and just at the beginning of the final song, in that crowd of ponies, you actually see photo finish. Mm -hmm. And all I thought was, the magics. <laughs> <laughs> and I really liked that final song. It was nice, upbeat, and happy, and I liked all the little cameos from all the key bearers that they showed. It was really nice, and we get to see 
Cheese sandwich again. He seems to be doing well. Actually, all the key givers seem to be doing well. That's good. Yeah. Well, it was nice that Discord was the one to give Twilight her key, especially since we had that earlier episode where he basically gave her a fake key. <laughs> kind of makes it a callback to, hmm, how much does Discord really know? And then going back to the dull eyes and the loss of the cutie marks when the ponies lost their magic, the dull eyes seem to me to be a callback to Gen 1. I seem to remember some moments where the unicorns that they designed with the gemstone type eyes, which I think are also the crystal ponies are a callback to, at some point lost their magic in an episode or another. And their eyes went gray like that. I don't remember anyone ever losing their cutie marks in Gen 1, though. They didn't put the same kind of emphasis on them then as we have now. I think it could also be a callback to um, Season 2 at the beginning where they all lost their colors when their... Not really their magic got taken out of them, but like their... When Discord broke their elements. Yes. But at that point, they were still able to move normally. The ponies that have been attacked by Tirok are physically weakened by the loss of their magic flash power, since apparently what you steal from Earth ponies is their strength. And the flight from Pegasus. Though I think that mm -hmm. all points back to a fan theory that's been going around that all ponies have some form of magic. It's just focused in different areas than others. And unicorns are the one species that can truly affect it directly. It's kind of innate or passive in the other races? Well, Pegasi can fly because they have wings and it's a fantasy universe. The logistics of a horse being able to fly are not something we really need to go into. The Pegasi flight magic is more of their weather manipulation and the ability to breathe comfortably in high altitudes and walk on clouds. Because you have lots of other creatures who have the power of flight who can't do that, like most birds. Mm -hmm. And I think most of the dragons. I don't think we've ever seen one perching on a cloud. Mm. So, another question of how long did it take Tirok and Discord to round up all that magic? Because we show them all over Equestria. Which is a good reason for Tirok to team up with Discord. Because with Discord's abilities, they didn't have to spend any time on travel. Mm -hmm. You can appear instantly, anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then the next question is, well, how long did it take to give all the magic back? Because we basically show the main six more or less flying over the entire world, or at least all of Equestria that was affected. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's nice to actually get to see that full map of Equestria actually in the show itself, not just outside of the show like that. Yeah, but there you have to wonder, okay, we saw, you know, the rainbow curve around you know, in the Breezy's homeland, but the Breezy's homeland, closed door. So other than it's magic, how did the rainbow get there? It's magic? Hands go up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking the rainbow just knows where it's supposed to go. <laughs> and since it's actually, you know, magic itself, it can go anywhere it wants. So anything else? Surprisingly not. Which is funny, for a two-parter, I think this is going to be about the same length as our normal ones. And I think it's mostly because it doesn't have a lot wrong with it. I enjoyed the episode overall. There is that, you know, major plot problem with Discord and how they handled him, but I think they did an okay job with that. But overall, I really enjoyed the episode and I sat back and enjoyed it without really thinking about it until I watched it again to be able to talk it over with you. Yeah, I'm sure there will be plenty of people who can tear it apart and find plot problems that we never saw or didn't think about. Or didn't care to look for. Yeah. I enjoyed the episode, but I spent a lot of time going, Oh my god, it's Tirok! Watch out! <laughs> and where's Scorpan? I liked Scorpan! <laughs> I spent a lot of time going, that is, yeah, yeah, that is the Gen 1 villain. That's cool! Awesome! <laughs> and then my brain just went, right now, does that mean we're going to get the Shmoo or whatever that thing was called? <laughs> the Shmoo's? Yes. Um, that depends on whether or not we want to introduce flutter ponies for the toy line. Because you can't <laughs> beat the smooths without flutter ponies. Or they could say, oh wait, but the breezies have special powers! <laughs> yeah, but you just, oh, you're ruining your own canon again! 
Yeah, but well, well, before we get you finish your thought there, then before I was we get say, what? Well, before we get too more, too much more just sidetracked, we too should finish this up. Too much couldn't bring the smooths to the current theme because, oh my God, they needed the witches to create it, and so far we don't have any humans still. So unless the smooths is somehow locked beneath the Earth's surface from an ancient battle that Luna and Celestia had, we'd still need some pony to create it, and. In Gen 1, that was the trio of human witches. There's no reason we couldn't have a pony or other animal-themed villain. But in the original, it was humans who created the smooths. Now, I really did enjoy the episode, other than the part with Discord. And when they first said the villain was Tirok, and we first saw his weakened form, I'm like, mm, that design doesn't look right. The coloring's right. But the face isn't right. And then as he got more powerful, I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks like Turok. Where's Scorpan? I, I like Scorpan. And a stupid thing at the end about him being a prince, but they took care of that because Scorpan and Turok are brothers. Strange family. Mm -hmm. Two-legged winged creature, four-legged creature with horns. Wow. Dysfunctional. <laughs> yes, and it seems like something Discord would be a part of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my long lost brothers! Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and or leaving a friendly comment below. If you'd like to see high-res versions of Lux's art, you can check him out over on DeviantArt. If you'd like to follow the progress of these episodes, which probably won't progress as much now that the season's over, and also check out some other audio snippets, you can check us out over on Tumblr. Links in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episodes 25 and 26, Twilight's Kingdom. And we will have another episode next week. It will be our thoughts on the entire season as a whole. Please tune in then. Thank you. And here's an outtake from this episode. Are you done with your Discord moments? <laughs> Other than, why don't I get a throne? <laughs> Hey, let's save that one for the end. Okay. <laughs> so I'll just actually, maybe I'll just edit that part out and put it at the end. <laughs> ah, let's see. Da, 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 da. And moving back to, um, and moving forward on to, nah. Pick a direction. We're moving somewhere. <laughs>